So where did dispensationalism come from? Let me tell you the story. First thing to be said about a dispensational reading of the Bible is it didn't exist before the 19th century. In fact, it didn't be exist before about 1820 or so. And it really began in a little revival in Glasgow in Scotland. And there was a teenage girl named MacDonald, a good Scottish name, um, who claimed to have a vision of a pre-tribulation rapture of the church out of this world into heaven. Now this event might have come and gone and not left much of a mark on the church itself, except that there was a certain reverend named Darby there who uh, heard this, became convinced that this theology was correct, began preaching this, and Reverend Darby uh, was one of the founders of the Plymouth Brethren denomination in the 19th century. Now again, this might have been a flash in the pan, a very small Christian sect with a peculiar belief that nobody in the first 1800 years of church history had believed in, um, except that Mr. Darby took, uh, took his gospel of the rapture to the United States. And he came in contact with the Billy Graham of his day. His name was Dwight L. Moody, the founder of the Moody Bible Institute and Moody Press and all of that. Moody became the sort of worldwide disseminator of this theology of dispensationalism and a pre-tribulation rapture on both sides of the Atlantic and for a very long time. And then we were off and running. Uh, what happened next is there began to be novels, not the Left Behind series, but earlier novels. One was called Jesus is Coming written by a Chicago entrepreneur who had become enamored with this theology of Dwight L. Moody. Moody Institute founded in Chicago. He had a lot of influence in Chicago. Then even later than that, we have what is known as the Schofield Reference Bible. C.I. Schofield is the person who uh, came up with this idea of not merely having a study Bible with chain references in the margin, but actually putting headings in the biblical text, like Jesus predicts the rapture, and then having study notes at the bottom of the page, so that the ordinary person who buys a Bible would go, well, look, it's right there in my Bible. The heading in the middle of Matthew 24 says Jesus predicts the rapture. It must be true, right? So we're really off to the races now in the early part of the 20th century with the Schofield Reference Bible and other resources. Somewhere in the mid-twenties, um, this lay theological movement, and I would stress, this was a theological movement not based on the study of the Greek New Testament or the Hebrew Old Testament, but, but uh, a lay theological movement that spread throughout the United States and in various places around the world. Somewhere in the mid-1920s, there was a felt need to shore up this theology with scholarly support and scholarly exegesis. And so you had the Dallas Theological Institute founded in the 1920s by a Presbyterian minister. Uh, this eventually became Dallas Theological Seminary. So the, you had two major centers of study of dispensationalism in America, one in Chicago and one in Dallas and both in the Midwest of the United States. Now, if you study the history of Dallas Theological Seminary and you look at the names of their presidents, um, involving a lot of well-known names along the way, uh, you'll discover that most of those folks continued to propagate the gospel of dispensationalism by writing books, uh, uh, various kinds of books like Armageddon and Mideast Oil by uh, Professor Wolvard or President Wolvard. Um, and then, of course, the famous Timothy LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins series, the Left Behind series, which led to this most recent movie about a rapture and the Left Behind uh, phenomenon. What you need to understand about this is that for 1800 years of church history, nobody believed this theology or thought it was, <coughs> was an accurate way of interpreting the Bible. Today, when we look at it, we can realize it's a relatively modern phenomenon. And as a modern phenomenon, it's, it's unique to the Western church 
Uh, it's unique to certain forms of Protestantism. In other words, it's not a Catholic theology, it's not an Orthodox theology, and actually only a minority of Protestants have embraced this theology. So what we need to say about this is that if it's not well grounded in the exegesis of the Bible, it should not be embraced. And in fact, it isn't. There is no theology of the rapture in the New Testament. So what I like to say about all this is the left behind theology needs to be, wait for it, left behind.